Okay, welcome back. And one of the things that I realized that I never did was go over the power supply we're going to be using for this amplifier. One of the issues that I struggled with was trying to find a readily available power transformer that was a, the right size for this small chassis that also had a low enough B plus for what we're going to be running this amplifier at. It's one of the reasons I feel this is a really good amplifier for a beginner is we're running this at fairly low voltage for a tube amplifier. It's going to be 240 to 245, 250, something like that on the B+. Um, it varies from how these transformers are individually wound. Sometimes they're you know, plus or minus a few volts, so I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be until we get a load on the transformer. So we're using this Hammond 269EX center tap transformer, which has uh, 190, 0, 190 volts at 71 milliamps. And we're wiring it up as a full wave rectifier, similar to what you would do, or actually exactly like you would do if we were using a tube rectifier, but we're going to use silicon diodes instead to keep the size small and not have to add an extra tube. The reason we're going full wave instead of a bridge is that we're able to get this B plus that we want out of a commercially available transformer that you can go to Mauser and order and get it within a few days. So. The way this is wired up, the center tap of the transformer goes to ground, and then each one of these other leads goes through a diode up to this connection point right here. This is a resistor called a bleeder resistor that we're putting in the circuit that connects from this point here to ground. The reason that this is in the circuit is we want to have a pathway to ground for these capacitors so that when the power is turned off, especially if there's no tubes in the circuit, that the electricity that's stored in these two capacitors has a pathway to ground so that they drain. Without this resistor in place, these things could stay hot for a long time. We're using a 470K 2 watt resistor because power will be running through this all the time and a larger resistor isn't likely to get as warm. And we're going with this high a value because we're trying to keep the B plus up as high as we can. And some people recommend 220, 220K, some even smaller, but I think this is a good compromise between the time that it takes for this resistor to bleed off this B plus current and increasing heat and having a lot of drain off the B plus voltage. So the next piece is this 33 UF 330 volt capacitor. And the reason we're going with 330 volt is the voltage will probably spike on turn on. And I want to make sure that we don't have to have a capacitor blowing up when we power up the amp. We're using a fairly small capacitor for this first one for a reason. We don't want to put a really large capacitor here right after these diodes because when you fire up the amp, there's going to be a huge inrush of current trying to charge up this capacitor. And the larger this is, the bigger that surge is going to be. So we're going to use a fairly small one here the next in series is this 2 Henry 100 milliamp choke that has 175 ohms across it, and it's a Hammond 254M. This is a really small choke. It's one of the reasons we chose it. It's a little close to the edge on the voltage that it's rated at, at 300 volts, but I think we'll be okay. After this choke, we have our large reservoir filtering capacitor which is a 220 UF 350 volt and this is going to be what stores the current and also 
helps get the filtering on the B plus as smooth as possible using this simple two capacitor one choke filtering system. And then on the other end of this, we hope to get 240 to 245 volts B plus, 250 would be fine. So hopefully simmed out on the program that I mentioned earlier, this simmed out where this should be good and it simmed out with very little ripple on the circuit. Now remember in the main wiring diagram, we also have this 4.7K and this 47UF that is the decoupling and extra filtering and to drop the voltage down that comes up to the plate of the triode in the tube. So technically it's kind of part of this power supply, but it's, it's drawn into the schematic and there's two of them because this gets done twice inside the amplifier. So it gets put in this part of the schematic so that you know that it needs to be doubled and you can't have just one of these for both tubes. So back to the power supply. Down here we have the heater wiring and because this 6.3 volt winding doesn't have a center tap, we're going to create what's called a virtual center tap using two 100 ohm 2 watt resistors that are on each side of this center point that's grounded. It's ideal if you try to match these as close as you can to each other. So this center point where we're referencing the AC to ground so that it's not just floating on infinity. This is a technique that helps reduce the hum in the amplifier. And then they come over here and it goes to pins four and five on the tubes that are the 6.3 volt heaters. And it needs to be, I would say a two amp minimum. I think each tube is 0.75 or 0.8 milliamps each. And you wanna have a little bit of headroom. And that's why I recommend making sure you have like a two amp minimum. So, that's the kind of deep dive on the power supply schematic. And let me show you where I'm at right now with the project. Okay, here's the B plus wiring. These are the two 190 volt leads off the transformer. And soldered to them are the 4005 diodes. Then there's a little bit of PTFE tubing and heat shrink tubing over the whole thing. They're both connected to this one pin right here. And then here's our bleeder resistor that goes from that terminal over to ground. This capacitor, this 33UF, is connected across this pin to that pin. This pin here is our star ground. This is the main grounding point where I've ground off the chassis and bolted this down. And then this is the center tap from the transformer. And I'll tell you a little story. When I was got this part wired up and I powered the amp on, I didn't have any B plus. And I was scratching my head going, what happened? I took this all apart thinking maybe I'd fried these diodes from overheating them and I was getting weird voltage readings across like each one of these to the center tap. One of them was 70 volts and the other one was like 120 volts and I thought there was something wrong with the transformer. Then I realized I never soldered this wire to this pin and it was just sitting on top of it. So hey we all make mistakes. Sometimes you have to go back and try to figure out what you've done wrong. And so I re-soldered all this stuff back together and the B plus started working. So don't get discouraged if you make little mistakes like that. So anyway, from here, we have this, from this terminal right here, where the two diodes and the positive of this capacitor, which is, 
which is this point right here, where all this is tied together. This wire back here, which is probably hard to see, but this wire back here comes around to the choke. And I mounted the choke here on the back of the amplifier using one of the pins, one of the bolts from the that hold this power supply connector on, and then I drilled one extra hole right here for a bolt right there. So the choke got mounted here in the back. So the choke wire comes from here to the choke and then comes back out to this wire right here, which then goes through this big 220 UF capacitor to ground. You can see that big guy just barely fits in there. Okay, you may see this little, you may notice this little ground here, this little wire here. This is the ground wire that comes from our star ground over here to the center, virtual center tap that we created for the heater wiring. And it's over here in, in that edge of the amp. So even though this is bolted to ground, we want to run a ground wire from this virtual center tap between these two resistors over to the main grounding point here, which is this part right here. So we've connected this to this main grounding point here. And in, in most amplifiers, you want to make this first capacitor's ground the star ground for the whole amplifier. And then here's the 220 volt, and then here, here's our B plus coming off. Okay, so from there, these two red wires, and I decided to go ahead and run two wires over here to this decoupling little circuit terminal thing that I created over here. The B plus comes over, and I've soldered them to the bottom terminal on each end of this board and this one you can see runs up underneath and over and then this one comes over to here then these are the b plus leads for the output transformers so they get connected there and there so what isn't installed yet is there's going to be a 4.7k resistor that goes from here to here and here to here, which will be the positive of these two capacitors, and then they're connected to ground. And that's going to be this little circuit right here. So our B plus comes up, and we're jumping across to this terminal, and then this is that 47 UF that's connected to ground is right here. And then we will have this terminal and this terminal will have the plate load resistor that runs over to the plate of the triode or driver tube, which will be, will be this connection right here. So that's where we're at right now. We've gotten this far into the wiring, and I did check the B+, and it don't be shocked if it's high right now. I think it was 360 volts or something like that. I'd have to double check. Um, but it was a lot higher than what we want to see. But there's no load on the transformer right now. Once you put the load on the transformer, the B plus should come down to where we want to see it. But we won't know that until we get that part of the amplifier wired up. So. I believe the next step that I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to work on this wiring here. I'm going to connect the plate of the output tubes. I'm going to collect, connect this ultralinear tap. This, what's important when you're doing this, this, um, this grid stopper and then this 470K resistor 
have to be in place before you power up the plate because the grid has to be referenced to ground so you get the negative bias on the grid so the tube doesn't just run away. Then I'm going to connect this 330 ohm cathode resistor and bypass cap to ground. And once I get this, once I get this section here wired up, then I can power the amp back up and see what my B plus is and slowly turn it up on the variac and make sure my B plus is where I want to see it. This part of the amplifier is where the majority of the current is drawn. So we want to get the B plus stabilized before we start wiring up this part of the amplifier and trying to get this voltage, this 220 voltage to the plate of the triode set. And we do that playing with this resistor here. This 4.7K may end up being 10K. It might be end up being 2K. I'm not sure yet what it's going to take to get this voltage here because it's 220 here and then it's 160 here on the other side of this plate load resistor. So we're looking to see about a 60 volt drop across this plate load resistor. The other thing that can affect this voltage is what this is set at in the, the negative bias that's put on this grid because it changes the current that goes through this tube and that can change the voltage here that's dropped across this plate load resistor. So again, we want to get this two, we want to get this, you know, 250 volt approximately stabilized. And we do that by wiring up the output tube and just not connecting this coupling capacitor yet, but the rest of this has to be in place. So I'm going to work on that next. And then the, in the next video, we'll power up the amp and do some voltage checks and see if our B plus is getting close.